pretzels? And why do they look the way that they do and taste the way that they do? Is it part of the fermentation or is it part of baking? Let's see. So, first thing you do when making a pretzel is the dough. And in Germany, after they make the dough, they hand dip that dough into a lye solution before baking the pretzel, which can be toxic. Lye can be toxic in high concentrations, but also commonly used for curing foods. Most German bakers use food grade lye, which is the chemical equivalent of drain cleaner, but is produced and packaged in a clean, regulated way. Since the lye dip is heavily diluted, the pretzel is baked after dipping, it won't kill you. In factories, they use a less risky mix of hot water and baking soda special flakes like these. Um, they also can use regular baking soda in higher concentrations to get that German style effect, but it's quite not the same as I've done my research and seen. And they essentially do the same job. Baking soda maxes out at about 9.5 on the pH scale, as we see. And on the other hand, lye, which is very acidic, maxes out at 14, which is the maximum you can get on the pH scale, which is pretty high, pretty acidic. The dipping process is very important for the pretzel baking, as we see here. This is because that um, is what starts the Maillard reaction, and that's responsible for the deep brown crust and crunchy arms and distinctive taste that we get. That's because the alkaline lye bath affects the way that the Maillard reaction plays out. This is a rough understanding of what Maillard reaction is, and that is most basic. The Maillard process is a heat-activated reaction between small sugars and amino acids. Dipping the dough into lye alters the ratio between sugar and protein because the lye or baking soda, in whatever case, breaks protein's presence in the dough into smaller bits. Those are the small amino acids that then combine with sugars in the lye or baking soda dip to create the flavor compounds in the pretzel crust. The Maillard reaction named after Louis Camille Maillard, um, a French physician, occurs every time you mix a uh, heat a mixture of sugars and amino acids. We see this also happen not only when we make s'mores, but when we cook steaks and or bread. In 1912, Maillard suspected there's a specific reaction responsible for the way raw ingredients change color and produce carbon dioxide when heated. But he thought it would be more important for medicine and diabetes because at that time, insulin wasn't discovered and uh, wasn't known. He didn't immediately recognize it would be very important for food, says Vincent Monomer, who is a researcher at Case Western Reserve University. Monomer's own research focused on a mild reaction that occurs inside the body. In this case, the result of the reaction is not so savory. Proteins undergo a process called glycation, and over time can lead to anthrocyriasis, which as we see here is um, not very good for you, can lead to blood clots, which is, um, you know, bad. Anthrocyriasis is a buildup of cholesterol plaque in the walls of the arteries, causing obstruction of blood flow. Plaques may rupture, causing acute occlusion of the artery clot, which could lead to death, potentially. Here we see glycation, which is a process known as uh, chemical interaction between a reducing sugar with an amino group of peptides and proteins forming a covalent bond and leading to the formation of glycated proteins or glycoconjugates. There is a downside to this Maillard reaction in cooking too. In certain circumstances, reaction produces cancer-causing substances like acrylamides, which are, which are most um, commonly seen in like french fries and bacon, so really not too much to be worried about. So after finding out all that, we can now thank this guy, Louis Camille Maillard for what we have today in steaks and also in bread, which I personally love.